Hi there, welcome. I'm Ryan, content developer for NT Write Online. Whether you're watching virtually on YouTube Live like me or gathered in person in Brookfield, Wisconsin, we are so excited that you've joined us for our annual fundraiser, Building Together. I'm joining from my home in Michigan where I live with my wife, Sarah, and work remotely. I joined the team just over a year ago and my main role is in helping create our online courses, eBooks, Bible plans, and social media content. As a former college instructor and trained librarian, I love being able to connect people with the best resources to answer their burning theological questions, and I think NT Write Online does that in such a unique way. One of our great joys at NT Write Online is that we get to minister to students around the world, many of whom you'll be hearing from throughout this hour-long event. While many of you are joining in person with the rest of my team in Wisconsin, those of you joining live on YouTube get to hang out with me. I'll be monitoring the chat feed, sharing helpful links, and answering any questions you might have. I'd love to hear from you in that space. So please say hi, share your name, tell me where you're from. We'd also love to hear any stories of how the ministry of NT Write Online has impacted your life with Christ. I'll be sticking around once the event is over to chat and answer any more questions about the event or our ministry. We call this annual fundraiser of ours Building Together because that's what we hope to do. We're proud of the community that you've helped us build. And we're also proud of the content that we're able to share with you. Tonight, we're here to celebrate what we've done, dream about what we can still do, and hopefully raise $30,000 in the course of this event to support those efforts. And that's where you come in. You can visit ntwriteonline.org slash donate to make your financial gift and help us strengthen this ministry. I'll be dropping that link in the chat periodically. For those of you attending in Brookfield, you can also give online or if you prefer by using the envelopes provided at your tables. And I need to let you know that we have been blessed with a matching grant. So whatever you give tonight will be doubled. Anyone who donates in any amount will also be entered for the chance to win all of our upcoming courses for the year 2023. You'll actually get to hear from last year's grand prize winner later on, so stick around for that. Again, the URL to give is ntwriteonline.org slash donate. We've got a lot of exciting material to share with you here tonight. You'll be hearing from my colleagues on stage in Wisconsin, as well as seeing the exclusive premiere of some material that we recorded with Professor Wright at his home in Oxford. You'll also get to see how this ministry is helping students around the world to renew their minds and be transformed as they reflect Christ in and to the world. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get started. As I mentioned, we have students joining us from around the world tonight, and I'd like to let them open up this event. So without further ado, let's build together. Hi, my name is Phyllis Ford. I'm in Arlington, Texas. Welcome everyone. I am so excited to see what God is going to do concerning NT Right Online and what we're going to experience today. Hi, I'm Lane Blessing from Fort Worth, Texas. I am so excited about tonight. This is gonna to be a great event. I'm an ex-South African calling in from Melbourne, Australia. And down under, it's actually morning. So I say good morning to you and what a great way to start the day. Hello, I'm Jeff Turnbull and I live in Chester in England. And I want to give you the warmest welcome from the UK. Hi, my name is Vanessa McQueen and I am in Cincinnati, Ohio. I am so very excited about NT Write Online and I can't wait to hear what's going to happen today. Hi, I'm Amanda Farbstein and I'm joining from San Francisco, California and want to welcome you to this event and excited to see how God blesses and moves you and teaches you in this time. I'm John Wallace from Leighton Buzzard in the UK which is about 40 miles north of London. I'm so pleased to join you as we support this ministry which I'm so pr proud to be able to support in a very practical way when David's team comes over to Oxford to work with Professor Wright. Hello, my name is Sid Ripong and I'm joining from Bangkok, Thailand. I'm glad we can share in the ministry of NT Right Online. Hello, my name is Angela Williams and I am in Southern California 
And hello to everyone on this call with me and hello to everyone around the world. And we're so excited to celebrate and to serve with NT Wright Ministries. Hi, I'm France Olivier from London, and uh, I am looking forward to learning more about how we are going to build together. Well, hello everyone here again, and hello to everyone gathered online. Um, I'm Jennifer Loop, and I'm the Director of Ministry Engagement here, and one of the best, the very best parts of my job is that I get to talk with people uh, around the world from all six continents, and uh, including those people that I met uh, either through an email that I responded to or who showed up at a webinar or who take our courses and ask questions, um, as well as the hundreds of people who are joining us online from over 20 countries. Now, just a little backstory. A lot of you here in the room, gathered here in Brookfield, Wisconsin, might remember David's trips to St. Andrews, Scotland, where he and Professor Wright were a two-man band with a videographer filming courses. And some of you gathered online have been with us since that very first course, which was Galatians. And incidentally, my husband was student number one, um, and now we're up to 120,000 people in 195 countries. Well, and here we are. And I want to tell you tonight, in just really briefly, the four ways that God has been expanding our ministry and moving in 2022 with the help of your support. One, new staff. You already heard from Ryan. New free resources new courses, and then finally, a new scholar. So again, you've already heard from Ryan, who joined us just over a year ago. Now, the addition of a new team member has made a huge difference to our organization, both professionally, with getting the work done, but also personally. It feels like a family. Um, and you can see us at Christmas dinner last year with our spouses where we're gathered here. Um, it truly is one of the places that I call home. And now that we've grown from a team of four to five, <laughs> we've been able to produce even more content. In April, Ryan and I joined David for filming with Professor Wright. And you can see us in Professor Wright's crowded uh, office in Oxford, where the books in the background um, outnumber the humans about five to one, uh, 5,000 to one. <laughs> they go all around the whole office. Florida practically ceiling. This year, what I've been able to focus on is interacting more with our students. Um, one of our values at the Wisconsin Center for Christian Studies is to be as personal as possible. So I've been able to do that by connecting with students like you see there and some of you in the room. Rebecca has been able to continue running our operations, um, caring for us as a staff, uh, certainly for me and our growing family of independent contractors. And she's also been able to focus uh, with David on dreaming big for the future. And you're all part of that. And we're so, so grateful. So in addition to new roles and a new team member, we've also added new free biblical resources on YouTube. You've helped us to do that. Why YouTube? You probably already know that YouTube is the second largest search engine next to Google. And then just a little bit more on the backstory about thinking ahead toward the future. Why YouTube? Uh, why that channel? A, a little backstory, Professor Wright, who was in St. Andrews, Scotland, uh, is now at Wycliffe Hall in Oxford, England. And Wycliffe Hall is named after John Wycliffe, who was a principal of one of the colleges during the 14th century, so like mid-1300s. Who would have imagined seven centuries later that we would be filming online courses in Wycliffe Hall, uh, in the chapel of the theological college that bears John Wycliffe's name, and where Professor Wright trained for ministry as a young man. I, we got to see him sitting in the pews of the chapel while we were filming, and he was sitting there quietly looking, and I asked him what he was thinking about, and he said he recalled sitting there as a young man training for ministry. So who would have imagined in the mid-1300s that today we would be making free Bible teachings available on YouTube, which has a monthly reach of 2.1 billion active users every month. 
And here's just a snapshot of the impact that our Reading Scripture Together YouTube series is having in people's lives. I'm going to read you two. I could read you 200. Um, that was great, especially for me as an Iranian. My country is passing through to dark days, but this message gives me hope because it reminds me that something new is becoming out of it. God bless you. Thank you for these words. I'm learning things I've never known before. One thing that helps me is listening to these short studies over and over. Please keep them coming. Heart emoji, smiley emoji. God is working in this space, and we get to be part of that work for his kingdom. And we are grateful to God, and we are grateful for you. Thank you. You not only support creating, producing, and getting God's word to the world, but you help me make personal connections with people that I get to respond to. I can't tell you how many times I respond to an email and people will say, I didn't think you were going to reply. I didn't think anybody checked this inbox. We reply to comments on YouTube. Uh, we reply to direct messages on Facebook and on Instagram. And incidentally, Instagram followers are up to 28,000 this year. So what are these people saying? Many of them thank us. Some ask for prayer, which we do. We have a prayer ministry and we pray for our students and we pray for a lot of you. Some request scholarships. You make that possible. Some ask for translations into various languages. Some ask to be part of that. I'm probably speaking to many of you um, who've asked and reached out. Do you have it in this language? Can I translate your resources into our native tongue? Sarah Pong, who you saw, who lives in Bangkok, has translated one of our e-books into Thai. I got an email last week from a professor at a theological college in Mongolia, and I looked up in our online platform, Udemy, and we have nine students there in Mongolia, and his email sends his warm greetings from cold Mongolia. And I thought, we're pretty cold here, too. <laughs> I get all kinds of questions. You have no idea. I get all kinds of questions, some of which I can answer, and the rest I forward to David. <laughs> um, I get questions from believers. I get questions from people with faith and people with no faith at all. In response to our last week's YouTube, uh, Anxiety and God's Promise, a woman emailed me from Texas, and I'll read you just a snippet, but she said this, devotion, this devotional video was God's perfect timing. Thanks for the encouragement through scripture. If you're watching, hello. That, your email touched me. Most of my days are spent interacting with folks virtually, but sometimes I get to show up in person. I met my friend Sita, who's joining us online with her husband, Nick, during an NT Red Online webinar, and they study our courses together from their home in Oxford. And Sita is a gifted poet, and she and I are working together on a project that I hope to tell you about next year. And you can see me here in a photo during one trip to Oxford, Sita gifted me with one of her own saris and gave me a sari wrapping tutorial. <laughs> she often speaks of the hope and comfort she and Nick find learning together online with Professor Wright, and she speaks words of life into me that I hope I get to pass on to others. So what are we inviting you to partner with us about? And what is it that we're inviting you to, to partner with us so that we can provide? Access. Access. We want to provide people access to biblical content no matter where they live. We want to provide access to free content. And we want to provide access to community. It's so wonderful to see your faces and to be sitting at tables and to be gathered together and to see you online. And our goal isn't just to go viral overnight. We want to meet people where they are and provide a winsome place to connect. And yes, you can connect digitally. And we want to make our content accessible for the everyday person, like me, who worked at a call center for 25 years. Not just scholars. It's not just about providing the right answers. It's about being formed together by God's spirit for his glory. So here's a look at the new free resources that God is, do, has made, is doing and that you've made possible. Um, I won't read through all this, but just to sum it up, we're on Instagram with free content, YouTube, YouVersion Bible Plans, we provide new eBooks, and we have guest bloggers. 
And our, of course, our online courses on Udemy, where we're up to 43 now, I think. And one person said this about our Udemy courses. I'm taking the class in Udemy. Incredible! Exclamation point, exclamation point. I listen, stop, think, write, just soaking it in. So much wisdom. Getting to know the story of Jesus like never before in my life. Prayer emoji. You enable me to interact and pray with our students, so thank you. Here's a quick example from an email I got in response to something we sent out about a course. Somebody said, I need God's help and his spirit because he's so silent to me. I feel so far from him. And we prayed for him. If you're watching, we listened. And many of the people that I pray for and that I get to pray with are NT Rod Online students who have become friends. And you can see some of them here. These are our prayer partners and friends that we met in person at the summer intensive this year in Texas. And for those of you here and those of you watching, we want to see you in Houston in June of 2024. So, new uh, staff, new free resources, and of course, as I mentioned, we've been still producing new online courses. It's still the heart of what we do, but it's not just individual study. Uh, I can show you a photo of some of our students forming groups and using our resources together, like this group of young people aged 70 to 90. I've helped pastors to launch courses uh, in small groups in their churches, and I recently talked to a professor planning to use uh, our courses with undergraduate students. And lastly, I could go on and on, but I won't. I'm excited to let you know that we've been working with a new scholar. So we still continue with Professor Wright, but this year we filmed with Professor Esau McCauley, Associate Professor of New Testament at Wheaton College. And Professor McCauley studied under Professor Wright in St. Andrews, Scotland when Professor McCauley was studying there. He team taught a course with Professor Wright called Ethnicity, Justice, and the People of God, and he guest lectured in our advanced course on Galatians. And here's Ryan and me um, at the studio filming in Illinois. So after working with so many small groups, I was inspired to bring it to my own backyard. And I reached out to my friends at Basics. Many of you know about a local nonprofit, Basics Brothers and Sisters in Christ Serving in Milwaukee. And we're partnering together to host an in-person event at our office in January of 2023 called Front Row Seat. And afterwards, the leaders will be studying ethnicity, justice, and the people of God together. We have had an incredible year, and we're grateful to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we're grateful to all of you. We're grateful to God for what he's doing in this world and in us, and we're thankful for your generous support in this work to expand the place of our tent and to stretch our curtains wide. Thank you. Coming up next, for those of you in the room, you can turn your attention back to the screen and you can hear from Professor Wright. You'll also hear from some, from some students and you'll get to listen in on a conversation between David and Professor Wright. Thank you. Hello, I'm Tom Wright, joining you from my study here in Oxford. Welcome to this event, which we are calling Building Together. Some of you are there in person in Milwaukee. Many others of you are joining online. One way or another, we're so glad you're here. Tonight, I want to share a brief reflection from a favorite passage of mine, Isaiah 54. I'm going to focus on verse two, rather in the way that I've been using in our YouTube devotionals, known collectively as Reading Scripture Together. These have been going out every week for a little while now. But first, as always, let's have some tea. So here is Isaiah 54, verse 2. Enlarge the sight of your tent, and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Do not hold back, lengthen your cords, and strengthen your stakes. As with any biblical text, we must take care to see this remarkable passage in its proper context. It would be easy to grab a verse like this and think, this sounds nice, let's use it as a kind of mascot and hope it works. But the Bible doesn't yield up its deepest secrets when we treat it like that. 
Isaiah 54 comes at the point where the great poem we call Isaiah 40 to 55 arrives at its resolution. The poem begins with the promise that Yahweh will come back and rescue his exiled people. After various twists and turns, in chapter 52 we are assured that he is indeed coming back to reveal his glory once more and to rule his world with a rescuing justice. But how? In chapter 53 we see it is done through the work of the servant of Yahweh, who suffers and dies to bear the sins of the people. As soon as that has been accomplished, Isaiah 54 opens with a shout of praise, commanding the daughter of Zion to sing, despite the fact that things may not look so good. No, says the prophet, it is time to celebrate. God's people are to get ready for the great things to happen, all because of the servant's work. The chapter goes on to declare that God's covenant with his people is being renewed. Chapter 55 then draws the conclusion in a burst of joy. Creation itself is going to be renewed and all people everywhere are summoned to come and join in. So, verse 2 is encouraging the people, right now ahead of the full results of all this, to expand the reach. The way we might say this in our modern Western world might be, add an extension onto your house, put on another top floor, build out to the side. But to a people used to living in elaborate Middle Eastern-style tents, the word is, enlarge the site of your tent. You'll need to stretch those curtains quite a bit. You're going to need longer cords and stronger tent poles. This, remember, is said to a people who feel cramped and diminished and are simply hoping that all is not totally lost. And the prophet is saying, not just is everything not lost, everything is going to get far better than you could imagine. And it's all because God's kingdom has been launched through the saving work of the servant. Because of his death and resurrection, God's new age has already dawned. The servant's followers are encouraged, against the grain of so much despondency in many churches today, to think big and to plan for God to do whole new things which we hadn't imagined. This new reality was what drove the mission of the early church. As we see in the Acts of the Apostles, this entirely new movement spread out in all directions in an almost literal fulfilment of Isaiah 54 verse 2. Much to their surprise, and even to the alarm of some, what God had done in and through Jesus resulted very quickly in people of all sorts from every kind of background being drawn into a new community, focused on Jesus, rooted in Scripture, eager in prayer, outward-looking in mission. They were spreading out their tents in all directions. And of course, the biblical resonances of the very idea of tent go back to the tabernacle in the wilderness, the place where God meets with his people, the place where the people go to worship. All that was now being extended in a whole new way. So, what about us? We live at a time when extraordinary possibilities have opened up before us. We have the chance to reach out to people in ways that were unheard of a generation ago. We all know that the invention of the printing press 600 years ago had extraordinary impact, making the Bible available to people in their own languages. Now, in the electronic and internet age, we can bring to people not only the biblical text, but training for people who have little opportunity for traditional styles of instruction. And that, of course, is what we are trying to do with our work at NT Wright Online. I have to say, Isaiah 54 verse 2 has already begun to come true. Ten years ago, none of this particular work was even imagined. Certainly it had never entered my head. But now to our delight, many thousands of people are, through this project, now being nurtured in their understanding of Scripture, and they are passing that on to others as opportunity allows. We have seen this work expand more than we could have dreamed possible, and we are pressing on further. Most of you will already have seen that we are now making the YouTube devotionals that reach thousands of people week by week with free and, we hope, helpful material. Naturally, all this depends on careful study, filming, editing, presenting the material online in a winsome personal manner, 
And since these devotionals, like our larger courses, regularly raise questions of all sorts, we do our best to respond personally to people who contact us with questions and concerns. So, much to my own surprise and gratitude, it seems that we are in an ongoing Isaiah 54 moment. We are being called to strengthen the stakes of a virtual tent of meeting for people round the globe. We are seeing it happen, and this is because you have helped in that effort. My own role in this is to continue, God willing, to present the fruits of my own continuing study of the biblical text. And you are here today, I assume, because you have been drawn in to these courses. So now, please pray for us to find new audiences for these messages. Like the people of Israel in exile, it would be easy for today's Christians to be despondent, faced with the world in the mess it's in right now. But God's good news is more powerful, and we are challenged by Isaiah and by the gospel itself to be, as it were, a tent of blessing, encouragement, and most of all, a place where people can hear God's word by his spirit. My name is Vanessa McQueen. I first heard about N.T. Wright during the pandemic um, in actually 2020. Um, I was just searching for something a little bit different than everything that I was already hearing out there, which was monstrous um, as it pertains, especially to the church. I was really discouraged and I knew that there was something more than what I was hearing. Um, and uh, a dear uh, teacher, uh, uh, pastor or doctor, Mark Sharona, I was in, I signed up for his classes. And as I was going through his classes, he began to assign books. And he told us to read Paul, the biography by N.T. Wright. Never heard of Dr. Wright before. And him telling me to read that book, us for the class to read the book, opened up a whole new world for me. So that's how I first heard about N.T. Wright, Dr. N.T. Wright. I was always an odd duck. Um, and so what people taught and what people thought, and especially as it pertained to the scriptures and God, I always saw it differently, but I didn't know how to explain it or how to back it up. And so I've gone through a, a long journey of being, you know, I really wanted to be a journalist. I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to be a paleontologist. I wanted ah, everything. Um, but the word, the scriptures has always been so important to me. And it brings tears to my eyes when I study the word of God. I love the word of God. And so a lot of times what I've heard preached or taught in popular church didn't ring true to me and didn't ring true in my heart and my spirit. And so what I would do, I'd gotten really frustrated. And so after I started reading his books, I started with the Paul, the biography, and then my dear friend, um, Pastor Phyllis, told me he has some classes online, Udemy, and I said, that NT right online. I said, what? And she actually gifted me my first class. And uh, she gave me the class, and I was busy. You know, I said, I'll get to it, and I didn't get to it. And then what happened is one day, I just sat down, and I started I said, you know, what else did he have? And so I started going through the different courses that he was offering. And as I began to listen, it, it just began to know, it rang so true in my heart and my spirit and my mind. Uh, it was confirmation that I wasn't crazy. So, it, you know, it, there's, there's, I, I wrote somebody today, I, I text somebody and say, this is so great because I said, there is challenge, there's correction, uh, there's confirmation, and there's change so it makes it so worth it you when you when it rings true even doctrines and theologies that especially as a pastor and a preacher and a teacher that I have taught that was wrong I'm I bless God for the opportunity to hear correction and then to be able to have it verified by scripture and then to say okay I'm not going to do that anymore because now I know how to speak it, preach it, teach it better. So it my it's, it's changed, actually, my whole perspective on ministry and how I deliver the Word of God. When you're hungry for more of God um, and you're hungry for more of His Word, it means that you've got to be willing to, I've learned personally, to be willing to let go of some of the things that it may, it's, it's not foundational to my faith. It, it doesn't, it's not saying that Christ is not Lord. It's not saying that God is not the Father. It is saying what I thought and who I thought He was is 
so much greater. So it's not minimalizing the gospel at all. In fact, Dr. Wright's teachings actually cause it to causes it to expand, you know, for us to understand that God wants us to be humans and not to deny who God is made who he is making us and transforming us to be that we were made in his image. So the, his messages, his teaching, the writings don't minimalize, but they actually expand um, the gospel, the, the truth, the scriptures, so that you understand it better. So um, I don't feel a red flag at all. In fact, I'm excited. But I really believe that where the church is today and not studying the scriptures, I've read studies that said that, st that, that, that Christians don't even read the Bible. Um, they go weeks and months and they don't read the Bible. I believe that if we as Christians, believers in this day and age, if we read the scriptures and understood what we read and understood where our place was, is in the earth today, that it would... Um, give an answer to so many who are searching. I really believe that our culture is reflecting, is reflective of the fact that the church doesn't know who she is. And if the church in the earth, if the body of Christ in the earth doesn't know, the sons of God in the earth don't know who they are, then how in the world does the world know who it is? So everybody's looking for an identity. They're searching to figure out who am I? And so if the very sons of God who were put here to bring him glory and have been given the scriptures and Christ to transform us, if we don't know who we are, we really don't have an answer for those persons who are searching for who they are. Well, Tom, do you remember the first time we met? I suspect that it was at that Wheaton conference yes. in 2010, spring 2010, yes. and they had this big conference and you, I think, had emailed me beforehand to yes. say, uh, coming to the conference, could we go back to Milwaukee afterwards? And I think I did a day or so in your church. We had got a, a, a trip planned for after the conference back to New York where we'd flown in and flying out of. That's and correct. so. If I remember rightly, Maggie went back to New York That's right. and caught a couple of shows, That's right. and I came up to Milwaukee and did some work with you. When I, in fact, arranged it with your publicist, she asked me, well, how long do you, do you need Professor right there? Uh, and I said, well, um, could I have him till 2 p.m. on Monday? My ulterior, ulterior motive was to get you in my office so that I could ask you the 10 questions that I've always <laughs> wanted to ask you on Rome. And I guess it was sometime after that that you came up with this uh, weird idea that we might start making some well, courses. Well, uh, yes, actually, uh, that had been floating around in my mind, but I needed, I, I invited you to come back to Elmbrook Church mm -hmm. where uh, I wanted to have you three on three days on Romans 8. Uh, but it was then that I think I said to you, uh, we need to figure out some way mm -hmm. of... Mm -hmm perpetuating the your teaching and extending it. Yeah, I mean, it's a funny thing because when I was growing up, we assumed when I was a young scholar that um, you write books and the books disseminate and then they get popularized and any good ideas you might have, one hopes they will filter yeah. down. The thought that one might actually have to do some of that work oneself was not something that had occurred to me. But I think it must have been around then that I had been in, I think I was doing a Veritas forum in Yale, mm -hmm. and the guy I was debating, who was a philosophy professor, who was an, um, uh, an atheist observant Jew, which is an interesting combination yeah. itself, somebody said to me that what Yale were doing was putting a camera in his classroom mm -hmm and making his lectures available online. Mm -hmm. And at that stage, we'd none of us heard about this online stuff that was starting to happen. And that was when was just I think going. I emailed yeah. you and I said, we can do this now. Wow. Just prior to that, I, I, I said, I th think I'm supposed to take your work to the world. We <laughs> laughed, thought that's never gonna happen. And then when MOOCs happened, mm -hmm. I thought, all right, I need to research this. Mm -hmm. And if you were willing to sit mm -hmm. in front of a camera for two days, mm -hmm. Um, I'll find a videographer that can right. do this, and then we'll see if this works. And the exciting thing about that was that when we launched our first course on Galatians in May of 2015, 
we ended up uh, in four days having 700 students sign up. Mm -hmm. And the people at Udemy, our course platform, called me and said, <laughs> who are you? And what's, what's who this is best? this NT right? And so uh, it, it became like, okay, this seems to be the right way to go because we can suddenly be in, in yeah. every nation uh, practically of the yeah, world. Yeah, and I, I like the idea of... Um, being in the public domain, as it were. Right. This is a course, it's open to the general public. Right. It's not hived off in private. Tom, I know that when I schedule time with you and saying, okay, I'm coming over to Oxford and we are going to, like for instance, on mm -hmm. this particular trip, we filmed Thursday and Friday and we did 15 sessions on the Psalms, 15 sessions on, of course, uh, about the authority of Scripture. Of scripture. And um, I'm mindful that when I set all this stuff up, um, I'm putting a big burden on you. <laughs> but what goes on in well, your mind when I, I do this? This is two things that a lot of the jobs that I've done in my distant and not so distant past have involved basically talking all day. I'm quite used, in a sense, mm -hmm. to having to bounce around. And I think it's a sort of personality type which actually resonates with that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's always a challenge. But then it is with, with anything that one is doing in writing or lecturing or, or preaching or whatever. I'm looking at the long-term thing. It uh, is very exciting to me that we've now got lots of students worldwide mm -hmm who are thinking thoughts that they might not otherwise have done. And my hope would be that they would then be wooed into actually reading some of the books which I and others have written, which will take these issues forward. Well, it's an exciting yeah. uh, task that we're about, and it's yeah. thrilled me to be a part of it with you and uh, to, at this stage of my life and your life, yeah. walk together yeah. in this. It's a sure. joy. Sure. Well, bless you. And it's been, it's been great. And I couldn't have done any of this without you and your energy. So, and the team that you've developed in, in America. Well, thank you. Well, they're, they're, they're a good lot. I've enjoyed working with they're them too. They're yeah. wonderful. And I have a great team and uh, I can't do what no, I quite, do quite, without them. Quite, quite, quite. <laughs> my name is Carlos Del Toro. I actually heard about N.T. Wright I would say sometime in the late 80s or early 90s, um, but I didn't really uh, pay a whole lot of attention to him. It was I learned about him through magazines like Biblical Archaeological, Archaeological Review, Bible Review, uh, so I remember his name. But I actually didn't start paying close attention to him until, I want to say, just before the pandemic or right around the time the pandemic started, and I found out about, because I started looking for courses on Bible to immerse myself a bit more during that time and this was maybe uh, uh, maybe May 2020 and I started and I went to U Udemy and I started looking for courses and he had courses out there and then I started paying very close attention at that time but I think that one of the most important ones for me was the 15 essential Bible texts because it covered a whole range of topics in a nice concise fashion so I was able to learn on uh, different themes and different topics and prep me for some of the other more specific courses. That was really, really helpful. I'm a, I'm a minister, so um, I, I've been studying the scriptures for, for years, but, I, but I, I really, I don't want to be melodramatic in saying this, but I really feel that the way that uh, Dr. Wright teaches and the way the information that he puts out in the courses, for me, it was almost like, almost like a Rosetta Stone for certain topics because I've, I've understood certain things intuitively, but I didn't have a really good solid basis to put everything together. Example, the gospel. That's a term that people throw out, obviously, and, and they, they bandied about all the time. And we sort of think we know what it means, but the way that he explained it, I had never heard that before. And as I started to really get into that and really look at everything step by step, it made total sense to me. The kingdom, again, it's a term that you hear and you understand sort of its government, etc. But the way that he explained it was just mind blowing to me. There are going to be differences of opinion on different topics and the like, so I always expect that with any Bible teacher, and with uh, with Dr. Wright's teachings, there are some things that are really, especially you know, even even the gospel itself, right? There's some people and kingdom and the idea of kingdom is almost you know so I hate to use the term, but radical as compared to some of the things we normally hear. To me, I actually welcome that because in some cases it sort of confirmed things that I've been teaching for years, but I'm not looking for, to proof text my own stuff, right? I'm, I want to learn. And where I have to adjust my own thinking, I'll adjust it. 
um, and uh, and someone who has been trained like that, you 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 have to, you know, you have to uh, allow the Almighty to open up your mind and heart to to receive that. So, am I going to agree with everything, even with what Dr. Wright teaches? Of course not, but that's okay, you know. But uh, but what I can agree with, it's it it has absolutely strengthened my understanding, and I feel privileged to be able to to teach some of the things that he's, you know, because I, I teach people. And to, to learn and have a better understanding to me is, is a privilege and an honor, so. Yeah. Thank you all for uh, attending to what our students have been saying and our uh, dear Professor N.T. Wright. It's a joy to work with him and it's a joy to be here in uh, Brookfield with you all and online. Uh, for those people who are online, we're thrilled that you're a part of this time as well. People online cannot see that in the back of this room we have erected a tent. And it is meant to look kind of like a Bedouin tent. Those of you who know the scriptures, especially in the Old Testament, uh, would remember that when the Israelites were wandering in the wilderness, God provided a tent of meeting so that he could be present with his people and so that his people could meet with him. Lives were changed when the people met with God in that tent of meeting. Later, that tent became the temple in Jerusalem where people came to meet with God, to hear his word, and to learn of his ways. Lives were changed when people encountered the living God at the temple. Jesus himself became the temple, the living temple, a wandering tent of meeting, if you will. People could engage with the living God by going and being with Jesus. Lives were changed through encountering Jesus himself, who was the living temple of God. The Apostle Paul declared, declared that we are the temple of the living God. Today, we are able to represent God because the Holy Spirit lives in us. By the work of the Holy Spirit, lives are changed as people encounter God through us. If we provide places for people to meet with God, we know that he will do his work. So think about it this way. The Wisconsin Center for Christian Studies, NT Right Online, is trying to provide tents of meeting all over the place, whether it's here in this room where we are together, or whether we are it's the tent of meeting in a course online, or on YouTube, or on Instagram. It's a place to have an encounter with the living God. It is as if you would think of a tent of meeting wandering around the internet where people are meeting with God by the Holy Spirit, hearing God's word being taught, and encountering God's people, and change is taking place. Those tents of meeting are personal in the sense that we are interacting with those people. As you heard, uh, Jennifer, who is our director of uh, ministry engagement, she is involved so often in, in talking with people, whether it's on Zoom or just uh, writing them, but being with them in their learning, in their walks with God, and change takes place. I know from what Jennifer says, because she reports it to us, not only is change taking place for the people who are online, but also in her and through her, change takes place in us because we are in fellowship then with those people who are experiencing a virtual tent of meeting. Lives are changed when people meet with God, hear his word, learn his ways. You all have made these tents possible. When a new course is launched, students' lives can be transformed. 
When we release a YouTube devotional, we create another virtual tent. When we put forth another episode on Instagram, people have another place where they can encounter God, another tent of meeting. When people post a comment either on Facebook or on YouTube or on Instagram, it is, they, we usually respond to them within a few hours. Now it isn't always that way, but we do our best to be present with people and as immediately as possible. And it becomes a two-way dialogue, not just a one-way broadcast. So our worldwide audience is interacting in our many tents of meeting, doing business with God, interacting with us. It brings encouragement not only to them, but to us as well. We try to share challenge and receive challenge. And we try to not only teach God's word, but be taught by our fellow brothers and sisters around the world. The main thing that we do is we try to take the tent of meeting and go to where people are. We want to go where they are. Whether it's in a course, on Instagram, or on YouTube, we are there for them and for the people in this room. We're here for you. Through your donations, this engagement with the Bible is worldwide and pro provides opportunities for people to learn at no cost or at very low cost. Instagram is free content. It's free to users, but of course we pay an Instagram specialist to make the post beautiful and engaging. YouTube content is free to users, but we pay professional filmmakers and editors to make sure that we have the highest quality content available on YouTube. We're thankful for professionals like Chris, John, Arian, Stephen, and others who do the work that we personally can't do, and so we ask them to do it, and they, we make it possible, and you make it possible to hire these people to do the work. So when you donate to the Wisconsin Center for Christian Studies, you make it possible for us to interact with these people. We thoughtfully respond to people who engage with us on YouTube. In the last 90 days, we have had 224 1,700 unique viewers of our YouTube material. I'm just going to say it again. Past 30, uh, uh, 90 days, over 224,000 unique views of our YouTube devotionals. I would call that a rather large tent. And we are excited about that. But the tent wasn't always... wasn't always that large. Let me take you back nine years to 2013. David and Linda James came up and led us in prayer. It was in their home that we started a tent of meeting, so to speak, and in their house about 20 people gathered. I taught the scriptures. We sang together. We prayed together, wondering what God would do in our lives. In 2014, as you've already heard, my friend, Professor N.T. Wright, and I uh, sensed an opportunity to take the teaching to the world uh, of the word, word of God worldwide. The desire was to make tents of meeting all around the world. And as you have realized from what Professor Wright said, what Jennifer said, is that our tent has grown much larger than those 20 people that met in David and Linda James's home in the year 2013. But let me just tell you one story about what it was like in December of 2014 when I flew to, it was Saturday, actually, Saturday, December 13th, when it was time to fly to Scotland at that time, Professor Wright was teaching at the University of St. Andrews, and I was flying um, actually on a, on a Friday, uh, I flew on a Saturday, arrived on a Saturday, you end up going overseas overnight and you get there the next day and um, 
December in Northern Scotland is cold, it is damp, it is cloudy, it is dreary. Um, it's wonderful. Well, uh, I didn't think so at the time, and I thought I must be crazy to be there. As I was driving from Edinburgh to St. Andrews on the wrong side of the road, from my point of view, I knew I was crazy. We had scheduled five days to film. I found a local videographer. I had a return ticket home and enough money to pay the videographer. Other than that, we did not have enough money to do the necessary work for editing and producing the courses. Lofty goals and little money. That Saturday evening, I was unpacking my bags at the hotel. I was jet lagged, hungry, lonely, and pretty sure I had made a terrible mistake by coming. Then, at about 7 p.m. in my hotel room, my cell phone rang. Like, who's calling me in Scotland? Dave? Is that you? The person on the other line uh, said, uh, inquired, yes, it is. And he said, well, this is John, not his real name. He said, how are you doing? I said, I told him where I was and how astonished I was to get his call. He asked me if I checked my email. No, I've flown overnight, and I just checked into my hotel. I'm just trying to get unpacked. And no, I haven't checked my email. I'm sorry, John. Well, I said, well, I needed you to check your email. And I'm thinking, well, I couldn't. I'm sorry. And he said, well, I want you to know that I just sent you $8,000. I thanked him profusely. And then after thanking God, I thought that this might actually be God's intention for me to be here in St. Andrews, Scotland. We now had enough money to pay for that aspect of the project. People were praying. I was in St. Andrews. Professor Wright was going to teach. The videographer was going to capture the material on film. And we will now be able to produce and release the courses. And that is what we did. You've already heard of what we've done for these past uh, nearly eight years since the idea of launching the courses. Yes, we have 43 courses. We're thrilled about that. We hope to have 55 courses by the time we finish filming with Professor Wright. And now, as you have uh, heard as well, in developing free material, particularly the YouTube material, where we intend in two weeks, maybe three, I'm not sure, but we intend to film 52 YouTube episodes uh, in December, in order to release those every Monday, a uh, YouTube devotional every single Monday at 8 a.m. Central Time. God willing, that means that in a few weeks it will be get on the plane, in this case fly to London Heathrow. Uh, we have a dear friend and supporter of the ministry that comes and picks us up takes us to the hotel, and we will be filming in an Oxford manner because we need it, in this case for YouTube, to not look like Professor Wright's office. Those of you who saw Professor Wright's office could probably tell he looks a little bit like a professor on the, well, um, disheveled side. Uh, he won't be seeing this, but uh, in, in any case, uh, his office, there just is not enough room for YouTube type video. So we needed to uh, do an Airbnb in an Oxford, uh, large Oxford manner, and we will be producing those, God willing, and releasing those so that we can be reaching more and more people with free material. What we hear from around the world is that Yes, people do like our courses. We have a lot of people doing our courses. But what we want to do is make free material available to the world so that 
millions and millions of people be able to be drawn in by the teaching of God's Word so that this tent of meeting called YouTube devotional, reading scripture together with Professor N.T. Wright or other scholars that we will bring in, that that will happen, God willing. I'm not going to go on uh, to con say all the things that we are trying to do. Um, you'll be brought into that in other ways, but I will mention that the aspects that we want to emphasize tonight is that not just how many things we're doing, we're excited about that, but how much we want that to be personally involved. We want to be in person with you. That means if people respond in it with an email, we respond back. If there's a comment on YouTube where we need to enter in, we try to be involved with that. Same thing with Facebook, same thing with Instagram. But the point is we want this to be a two-way dialogue, actually three-way when you consider that God is the one we want people to dialogue with in particular. Attentive meeting. Where is it? This room here? Yes, that's why we set up, set up the tent in the back to remind people that we as people in whom the Spirit of God dwells, we are tents of meeting. When you meet someone, imagine that you're erecting a little tent and you're interacting, encouraging them to be present with God, hearing God's word, understanding his ways, and in so doing that their lives might be changed. Why do we do this event? Call We call it a virtual fund fundraiser, but it's building together because in this next year, with the Elements that we're trying to formulate to put together with not only new YouTube content, Instagram content, new courses, and forming relationship with other godly scholars. All of these things, of course, take resources. And that's where we need your help for building together. We do this together. It is a joy to be able to join, not only with the people in this room, and I wish the folks online would be able to see the people in this room, but um, I just want to encourage all of you that are watching online that the people in this room have been the backbone of what we've done over the past eight or nine years, and they've made it possible to do what we do. Now, they will continue as God leads, but we also ask you online, if you're able to donate, you will have a link, ntwriteonline.org slash donate. And we would love to have you participate, participate with us. We're thankful for our people in this room who've actually paved the way <coughs> to let us keep going. It's a thrill for me to see us not only to extend the length of our cords, but now we're strengthening our stakes. And that's what we want to do to present more tents of meeting so people can encounter God by His Spirit, through His Word, to become who they ought to be as true human beings who image who are in the image of God and reflect God to the world and that they themselves reflect worship back to God. If that happens through your help, we will have done our job by providing attentive meaning for as many people as we can and change will happen. Now what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to turn it over to Professor Wright, who is going to close our time, and uh, I'll, uh, he'll ask you to stand, and, and those of you who are in this room will all stand. He is going to close us out with a word of benediction, 
And then after that, I'll ask Eric Albach to come up and wrap up our time together. So I'm going to turn it over to my friend, Professor N.T. Wright. I do want to say a warm word of thanks to all of you for your share in this ministry. When we began filming in 2014, we had no idea if anybody much would be interested in what we were producing. Now I'm amazed and thankful for the many people who have engaged with this program. We receive encouraging emails from around the world about what these courses have meant to them. Of course, this is a team effort. All I do is talk to the camera. I'm hugely grateful to David Seamoth and his colleagues for their hard work taking what I put on film and doing all the necessary work behind the scenes to make it available worldwide. I would also ask for your prayers, as in the last two months, I've been struggling with the after effects of COVID-19, as well as other physical difficulties that are basically part of growing older. God willing, we shall continue our work in the days ahead, but we need your help to strengthen the stakes of this ministry and extend it further out into the world the world that is now accessible through today's technology. So as we close out this evening, I would like to leave you with a word of benediction. After this benediction, please do stay for conversation, whether online or for those in Milwaukee, in person. If you can, please stand to receive these words. So may Almighty God make you faithful to his calling cheerful in his service and fruitful for his kingdom and the blessing of god father son and holy spirit be upon you and through you with all those to whom he sends you today and always amen thank you so much for joining us for this very special event you're welcome to stay and talk in the chat if you've got any questions at all i'd be happy to answer them or you can email ntwriteonline at gmail.com and please if you're able, head on over to ntwriteonline.org slash donate to support our ministry. Remember, because of our matching grant, your donation today goes further. Everyone who donates will be entered to win all of Professor Wright's 2023 courses. Again, that URL is ntwriteonline.org slash donate. Thank you all so much for being here. You're the reason that we do what we do, and your support is the reason that we can do what we do. Thank you. I think the thing that has helped me more than anything has been his lessons on the Udemy platform, the NT Ride Online. I um, subscribe to all of them, and I work my way through them. Um, I teach a Bible class on a regular basis, and I find that he gives me a lot of insights that I don't get anywhere else. Uh, sometimes uh, people tend to be so technical that they miss the big picture. And what I really like about Professor Wright is that he takes that big picture and pieces it all together. I like his illustration, for example, about learning your way around a city. Uh, in a book like Romans, for example, it's so easy to get keyed into certain verses and think that this is a development of point by point by point, and you miss the forest for the trees. And I love the idea that he's able to back up and say, this is how the pieces work together, like navigating around a city. And that's the way I feel when I'm in one of his studies.